share some slides with you. Thank you. This has been a terrific journey, as you can imagine. It's not something that happened quickly. Um, it began well before the pandemic, and in fact, we were paying bills already to the architect, who I think she slipped away, um, in 2018. So this journey has taken a while to begin to get the concept of what the walls and the, the altar area would look like. And <clears throat> as we moved along this process, with uh, discussions, of course, as you can imagine, any nonprofit has lots of discussions. Um, <clears throat> and so in the process of that, we realized that we had a special opportunity with the floor. Um, the floor used to be carpeted. Um, there used to be a raised platform up here, for example. Um, <clears throat> and, and so as we realized that the carpet had reached well beyond the, the, its days, and needed to be um, changed. Uh, we recognized that we had basically an open palette that we could do something with. The question was what? Um, and so considering a variety of different options, um, all but one flunked. And um, that one turned out to be having been made in contact with a fellow by the name of Mike Miller, known as a concretist, who um, has a long history of doing projects in concrete in various locations around the country and some internationally. Singapore, I think. Uh, <clears throat> so he was an easy guy to talk to. Cold called him, says, oh, sure. Um, and we got together and he made a presentation and one I'll always remember is he showed some some pictures of, of work he did executed in the concrete um, in Georgia for a Whole Foods that represented a river that was flowing through this particular community. And that was one light bulb that went on. It's like, okay, this represents a possibility. We had already been flirting with the idea of a river of blood and incorporating that theme into this, into this space. And Mike has helped us <clears throat> then uh, along the way with all kinds of conceptualization processes. Uh, in fact, I think we wore out one of his artists. <laughs> she moved to Colorado. <laughs> so, um, but it, that process, of course, was also interrupted by COVID. You know, here we are, we're throwing this curveball that's none too exciting and disrupts everything that we felt was a normal life. So the task force, we hit the pause button. Um, and it was uh, somewhat later when Karen Slaybaugh said in some, I'm not sure she's even in here right now, but she said, well, we gotta do something here. Um, and so we reactivated and began to have uh, famous Zoom calls and discussions and whatever. So as it evolved, um, we, and I'll show you some slides here now um, that, that take you a little bit on the journey. Before we go there though, let me say that the congregation had had discussions some years before and had developed basically a wish list of things that had to be done or wanted to be done. Um, and that included everything from updating the electrical system in here, which was 50 years old and not really of any particular great benefit. Um, and we had always had frustration with the acoustics here. Um, the carpet did a wonderful job of sucking up the, the sound. And, and so that was a, a target as well. Um, and even entering, entering the space, it was a challenge because there was a wall in a place. And then you had to, oh, there are double doors on each side. What, well, what, which way do I go? Um, and so it just, it just didn't really work um, as a welcoming, open um, place to come to worship. And so we've removed it. Um, <clears throat> other mundane, not mundane, but important things like the, the HVAC system. Well, uh, 
um, it definitely needed to be changed. And so one of the things that has been done is completely update that system. So now you're, you're, you're blessed with filtered air here um, that's recirculated and it's balanced with um, the demand of the internal temperature versus the external environment. If it's cooler outside, you want to cool this off in here, we blend in some outside air or vice versa. So it's, a, it's been a real positive thing and it, it helps people post-pandemic post to feel, and I hope it's post-pandemic, um, <clears throat> feel more comfortable about coming into a space like this and, and feeling that there's good air circulation and there's a good blend of fresh air in here as well. So, um, with, with that introduction, let me just say that, that the whole process then began to e evolve. Um, and if we could get this, the first slide, please. One of the things that, that surfaced early on was to try to build a theme around the, the, the tree of life and the river of life. And of course, if you go on the internet, you can find those inspiration those slides like the one we're showing. If we could go to the next slide now. And in addition to that, um, right in this particular area is, is the watershed of Coota Creek. Uh, and we heard some earlier comments about that. And Peter Moyle is here, who's had his hands in, literally in that space. Um, and <clears throat> so we felt that in the process, um, that was a, a representative of where God has placed us. Where are you? You're in this watershed today, and let's try to find a way to incorporate that into the, into the lobby area of this, of, of this um, facility so that you can, when you come in, um, if you recognize it or taught about it, then you can say, ah, this is, this is my home. Next slide, please. Um, <clears throat> now, if you, I think you are all familiar with the patchwork uh, fields and so on that, that surround the area, and also the picture on the right-hand side there is a, a, from, from the airport. Um, and that happens to be the, the river, Sacramento River, running through it. Well, those, all those little cues were inspiration for directions that we, that we might go. Let's go to the next slide then, please. Well, we started the process with Mike of, of doing um, renderings, I guess is the right word. And uh, we did renderings on renderings on renderings on renderings. And as I mentioned earlier, we wore out the first artist that worked with us. Um, but that begins to give you the image of the river of, or the stream of Puta Creek uh, with surrounded fields and so on. And even today, if you go back into the sanctuary and look at the floor, you'll see those images coming out right from this early drawing. So that part turned out to be quick and relatively easy for us to settle on. Thanks. And uh, here's an additional rendering, which we're <clears throat> beginning to pull in the, the, the union between the lobby area and the sanctuary itself. And so we had a variety of discussions about how we would go ahead and actually accomplish that. And I think the next slide um, begins to give you, uh, it's not going to be something you can see all that well, but we wanted to tie these things together with the same story. Um, and so the Puda Creek transitions into the river of life that you see flowing into the sanctuary here. Um, and um, if we could go to the next slide. Um, eventually we got to um, a design parameter that would allow the artist to get, begin to execute a floor design here, which is what I'm standing on and you're sitting near. Um, and, and so at that point, um, I think it's time for another slide here. Um, this shows just a snapshot of the way the space used to look. Uh, lots and lots of wood. Um, and... Uh, <clears throat> our high-tech approach to kind of conceptualizing, laying out what was going to happen here. So 
Um, all we had at hand were long extension cords. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I'm really glad, Mike. Um, <laughs> it, it, it turned out to be more beneficial than I knew. <laughs> so, um, you know, that began to give us some visualization of how this might actually lay out. Could we go to the next slide, please? Um, yes, actually there were, there were windows on both sides here um, that used to, um, well, in many ways were distracting. It, 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 was for, it led in a substantial road noise, for example. And so we wanted to eliminate and change that, plus we wanted to expand the storage space in here, which there was precious little of. And so if you were to go around the corner, you can find the music people hang out have, have goodies tucked away around the corner. And on this side is a sacristy um, and a, a robing for the minister and so on. Um, so, yeah, there was a, ma a major change in the front, in the front here. Um, this particular slide that you're looking at now, though, gives you sort of midway progress of, of the development of the scene in the lobby area itself. And if we can go to the next slide, um, this is the same thing going on in this space. Um, and that's your, the, the photo on the right shows you um, a solution to a natty problem that we had in this, in this, in this project. And that was uh, this pole. This pole is sitting right in the middle of this entrance. What on earth do we do with this pole? Um, and back and forth, round and round we go. Um, and then finally, one of the artists that Mike brought in to actually execute the floor said, well, that's a perfect, that's a tree. Just think about it, it's a tree. Um, turn that into the tree of life. And so when you come into the space now, the first thing you are welcomed by the tree of life. As you pass through it and around it, you'll find that there are leaves in the floor uh, if we could go to the next slide, as well as photos of colored fruit. Um, all of that comes from um, revelations and, and um, the leaves for the healing of the nations um, and the 12 kinds of fruit for representing our diversity and welcoming. Um, so um, that was a terrific solution. And now let's go to the next slide. Well, Having done the floor was a, was a backward way to start this project, but we had to take advantage of it because Mike kept telling us, guys, I'm going to retire. Uh, this, is, this is it. You know, if, if you want this done, we've got to go do this. And so um, we relented, and we did this floor first. And then, of course, we had all the construction to do everything else, um, changing the lights, redoing the electrical, covering up the... the concrete block walls, um, and so on and so on. And so I diligently covered this space up to protect it as, as we possibly, best as we possibly could, which turned out to be a success. And as you can see, there was um, a, a good deal of construction, especially in this altar region up here. Um, and by the way, that tower back here um, is a wonderful cooling tool. There are windows that open. And so when the temperature is warm in here, that warm air will float out and it will pull in cool air. Um, so it's kind of nature's natural cooling system, right? Um, but it turned out to be a real high wire act in the process of redoing this. I mean, these, these guys were hoisting around four by eight sheets of, of sheetrock up there um, 30 feet in the air trying to position them and to, and to put them in place. So they worked um, terrifically hard. Um, and they worked, it worked well. So could we go to the next slide, please? Well, we're nearing, um, we're nearing the end. Uh, you can see the front of the sanctuary now pretty much as it's represented in that, in that slide, um, as well as the um, lighting that's, that's beginning to emerge in the, in the space here. And I think the last slide shows basically what you can see here today, the end product. 
um, in this space, which shows on the left-hand side, obviously, the tree of life and the river um, of, of life. Um, and, <clears throat> and in addition, the lighting uh, that surrounds it. I'd like to end by saying, take a look at the lights. You know, how and why were three ring lights put in this space? That, for us, is representative of the triune God. Um, and so, in addition to that, take a look at the sconces on the back wall and count them. There are ten. And you know what ten means. Um, it's the Ten Commandments. Um, so, there, there is, let me just close by saying we did our best to be intentional about the design and about creating an environment and a message so that people who come, whether they're the regulars um, or the seeking, can begin to be inspired and appreciate um, the, the space that they're in. Um, so with that, if there are questions, I'll be glad to take a few or divert them to Mike. Yes. That, it, it, it was taken, it was actually hanging right above my head here um, in the original um, space. Um, we rescued it, I took it home to my shop, um, stripped it, refinished it, um, and uh, put it back up and mounted it physically on the back wall. So, yeah. And the same with these furnishings. We're, going to, we're not completely done, uh, but we're going to continue to repurpose those as well. Um, someday there may be new liturgical furnishings in here, but frankly, we've spent all the money we had. Uh, <laughs> so, and that was, that was one of the promises that we made right from the very beginning, that we will do this we will renovate this space to the degree that we have money to fund it. Um, we don't want it and didn't want and did not add any debt. Um, so in that respect, it was a success. So, any other questions? Oh, by the way, I have some guests here. Mr. Mr. Parker Green has his hand up and would like to ask me a question. To do the internal part of this, about five months. And, the, and my other grandchildren are Wyatt and Addie. And that's Mama that's sitting there and her husband. So. <laughs> Little did they know they were gonna be put on the spot, right? Yeah. Yes. The entire system in here is LED. Um, so, you know, for, first off, that's part of Title 24, which you probably have heard about, which are the codes that, really, that, may, um, that we all comply to, with now in terms of a variety of things, including electrical and lighting. So it gave us an opportunity to, to really reconfigure the space. And that was, by the way, your question triggers another thought. In the old space, we did not have really good lighting. We had years and years of people saying, oh, I just need more light. Uh, would you please find a way to bring more light in here? Well, we did. Um, and, and so I think it's turned out really well. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure. That's a that's a really fundamental question, right? Um, I I worked in the commercial world, um, both from an academic point of view and then within companies. And and as you probably all or most of you know, they operate a little differently. Um, there's a boss, and there are lieutenants, and there are sergeants, and so on and so on. So it's a little bit, not terribly, it's not military hierarchical, but it's kind of hierarchical, right? Well, you know, nonprofits are volunteer organizations. 
um, and people come together um, because of a mutual interest in being in a particular place, um, and that requires cooperation. Uh, and it requires a different level of patience, I might add, um, and, and something that, um, that was one of the learnings I had, um, was that um, you just really had to work steadily with people and continue to talk and work through and let ideas either fail or, oh, yeah, that's kind of a nice one. Um, and listening to each other, I, that's the other part of this uh, that becomes terribly important. Uh, the, that, you know, we, we join these kinds of organizations because they feed us in a, in a certain, certain spiritual way. Um, and that was one of the goals, by the way, of this overall process, was how can we enhance the spiritual journey of people who come here? Um, or you tell when you leave here and you talk about, oh, I feel really good about being in this space. Um, it helps me. And for me personally, um, I learned a long time ago that, you, you know, there are multiple ways that we learn. One is reading, there's listening, and then there's another piece. It's the visual piece. And so often, I think we don't, pay enough attention to the visual piece. Um, that we can, for me, I, just uh, speaking from a personal point of view, you show me something um, and I'll, I get it. If you talk to my right ear, it's very likely to leave my left ear. Um, I don't think I'm unique. Um, I think that, that having more and more tangible experiences where we are is, is something that that really benefits us. And long-winded answer, but yeah. Mm -hmm. That's but well, that was unexpected, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Bob has promised to be on the hook to finish the rest of the altar. Um, and so he, he will take on that task for us as well. Yeah, Whit. Um, it's a product that's called what? Ramboard? It's what? Yeah, it could be protected, protected with masonite, but what they did use was a, was a commercial product. It comes in big rolls. They come in and roll it out, and so it's, a, it's super dense cardboard. Um, and um, it worked. Believe me, I was in here so many days um, with fingers crossed making sure that that they weren't breaking through and creating a problem with the floor itself. Ha, <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I'm glad to have you folks in here, and I will take more questions if, yeah. 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 some good climate news, but we have a long ways to go. So we're trying to do our part as best we can. We try. We try. <laughs> and, and, that, and, that, and that's its own journey, you know. It is. It is. Oh, uh, good question. Qu the question is uh, communion. Yeah, right, right now, um, we do communion in stations. People just come forward and receive communion in stations and then go back to their seat. Although we just, once, a couple weeks ago, we received in a semicircle because we used to have kneelers, like a platform that you would kneel at, and that is a, a possibility in the future that we can have kneelers as furniture. So we're, we're, we have sort of a phase two liturgical furnishings committee that's working on that as possible. And, and I would add to that, Dan, that yeah. one of the goals of this project was to create a space that was more flexible. Our old sanctuary was not flexible. Um, it was, for example, coming up to where the kneelers were, it wasn't even ADA compliant. Um, so in the debate about, well, what are we going to do? Uh, are we going to have kneelers? Are we going to have a platform? Blah, 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 blah. And at the end of that, or not, yeah, I suppose in that process, one of the things we learned was that in order to be ADA compliant, that the, it would have used a huge amount of space just to provide a, pl a ramp in here. Um, and so in addition to that, we, we, we want to have further outreach into the community, particularly from a music point of view. And so one of the things that we're able to do now is to have, for example, the, the um, children's, uh, the young adult choral group from Davis uh, come in here and practice. They're in here every Tuesday, four o'clock. You should hear those kids sing. It's incredible. Well, by having, by having the space organized like this, um, yeah, we give up kneelers, 
um, we could we can find a solution if we really want it as we go forward and live in this new house. Um, and uh, but at the, at this time we're getting used to doing it as Dan described. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. That was the point. <laughs> oh, oh, welcome. <laughs> Can I add on to I just that was exactly the the film of Canvas wasn't here today, but that's exactly what he wanted. You'd appreciate hearing that. <laughs> in the morning, do you get the live broadcast? Not so much in the morning. <laughs> More in the afternoon, because the windows are on the side. It's yeah, it's indirect light in the morning. Oh uh, yes. Were you planning on taking the water, or are you planning on taking the water? I should let Jenny talk to that. <laughs> <laughs> It, your, your comment, though, does cause me to, to remember that as you move into any new home, um, you begin to think about, well, how it should be, you know, are we going to put paintings here or pictures there? Or how are we going to decorate it? Well, that discussion is going on, um, and, and I think the genesis of that will be some banners that reflect the liturgical year of the church. Um, and I think on these walls, left and right, or, or behind the altar itself, um, will be, give us plenty of space to express that. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate both your time and your questions.